Welcome to the modern C++ library for Windows. In this demo, I'm quickly going to show you how to write a Windows Store app from scratch with standard C++. This demo is going to focus on the Windows runtime, so the same code works equally well for Windows Phone apps. Here you can see an empty Visual C++ project with a traditional WinMain endpoint function. If I run this, I get the expected error indicating that the app failed to start. So let's use the modern C++ library to quickly get things going. First, I'll include the modern header. Now everything within the modern library resides directly or indirectly within the modern namespace. There are a handful of useful supporting types for power users. There are a few internal details within the internals namespace. Of course, being a header-only library, you get to peek inside and see what's going on. There's the classic namespace for traditional APIs such as Direct2D, Direct Composition, Imaging, Animation, and so on. And the Windows namespace, where all of the Windows runtime types reside within their respective namespaces. Let's start with the modern namespace itself. In the first bit of code I'll add is a call to the initialize function. Remember, the modern C++ library adds no overhead of its own. This is not initializing modern, it's initializing the Windows runtime. Everything about modern is inline. It's as if you'd call the Windows runtime's row initialize function to initialize the thread. And indeed, that's what this compiles down to but you don't have to think about cryptic arguments and error handling. Now every Windows Store or Windows Phone app must start off by calling the core application's static run method, but run expects an implementation of the iFramework view source interface. I'm just using a struct here to avoid a bunch of public keywords, but you're free to use the more conventional class if you wish. And I'll just let modern implement all of the boilerplate code for me. This includes implementing iInspectable and iUnknown. The modern library just projects the underlying Windows runtime types within their corresponding namespaces, so I can use the same intuitive namespaces here within the modern namespace, of course. Of course, modern doesn't know what view to create, so I'll just implement the createView method myself. Notice that this looks nothing like classic com. The library takes care of that for me. The view class is where the app will really come to life. But let's wrap up the win main function quickly, now that we have the view source implemented. That's it. View source takes care of creating an iFramework view source implementation. This is then passed to the static run method, which launches the app. Keep in mind that if at any time you want to break out of the modern C++ abstraction, you can simply peel away the layers as much as you desire. You could, for example, get the core applications, iCore application static interface. You now have a modern C++ reference to the underlying iCore application interface. Even at this level, you're shielded from pointers and reference counting. I can be more explicit here. Notice there's no asterisk, and I can call the run method again quite simply. As you can see, that's not a pointer. But if that's not enough, you can dive right down to the ABI level like this. But this is only necessary when you're exploring or need to interrupt with an external library that doesn't know about the modern C++ library. Still, it's good to know the flexibility is there when you need it. Usually, you can just do this. So, how about the app's view class? 
Again, Modern comes to the rescue by implementing all of the boilerplate code for you. And believe it or not, we're done. There we go. The Modern C++ library provides a default working implementation of iFrameworkView's five methods, along with implementing iInspectable and iNown, of course. Compared to using the Windows Runtime APIs directly from standard C++, this is a huge saving. And even next to C Sharp and C++CX, you're saving a ton of typing here. But let's say you want to override something, you know, to make your app actually do something. No problem. Chances are you'd like to override the initialize method. The one thing the initialize method is responsible for is activating the app's core window when the view's activated event is raised. The default implementation provided by the modern library does that for you, but here we'd like to do a bit more inside this activated event handler, so I'll just handle this event here myself. This event is defined as a generic typed event handler, and you can certainly provide one of those yourself but here I'll just use the lambda expression for convenience. The first argument is the core application view itself. That represents the object raising the event. And the second is the event args. This interface is in another namespace, so I'll mention that here as well. Of course, if you're feeling terse, you could just use the auto keyword and avoid all of this as well. In this case, the using namespace is not necessary. Anyway, that's a matter of style and it's up to you and the compiler to decide how much is enough. Now remember, this is the point at which the application is responsible for activating its core window. The window is activated. Now at the point that the activated event is raised, the app's core window has been created and we can register for any events of interest. Let me just hook up the key up event so you can see how this works. I could use the core window's static get for current thread method or I can just reuse the core window property on this view. The window is activated and now let's hook up the key up event. Here again, I'll just use a lambda expression. The sender. And the event args. And then I'll just make sure this works by tracing out the virtual key code. And let's see if this works. And I'll just hit a few keystrokes. I'll switch back to the debugger, and sure enough, there are the keys that were captured. Great. But no sample app would be complete without a hello world message, so let me override the views run method. There's the initialize method, and I'll add run. This is where you might write a custom message dispatcher to integrate some high performance DirectX rendering for a gaming loop. Here I'll just defer to the default implementation. But before I allow the message loop to run, I'll kick off an async operation to show a message box. The message dialog class is in the pop-ups namespace, so I'll just use that here. And then I can create a message dialog object. And I'll just call its show async method so that it will run once the dispatcher has taken over. And as a final touch, I'll close the app when the dialog is dismissed. The sender. And the event args. I'll just call the core applications static exit method. Now that's not something you do in a production app, but it comes in handy during debugging. 
and I'll throw a breakpoint on that line to confirm that it's not all smoke and mirrors. And let's take a look. Hello World from the modern C++ library. I'll hit the close button. And there we are inside the completed delegate, ready to call exit. And that's a whirlwind tour of the modern C++ library's support for the Windows runtime.